previously on Dragon Ball Z. Uh, wait, wrong series. So who's ready for some more top uncanny X-Men keys? Part three after the intro. Hello everyone, Steve from Cantu Comics here. If you've been following along chronologically, I was going over my best Uncanny X-Men keys and uh, ended on issue 199. In case you haven't seen part one or two, I highly recommend stopping and watching those first. They are linked in the description and above. So let's get to it. So to start off, we have Uncanny X-Men number 200. I've got three copies here. And the significance is that Magneto takes over Xavier's school. So at the same time, Professor X quits the X-Men. Three copies, and we have two direct editions and one newsstand. Pretty iconic. So this next one, it's, uh, it's another pretty good key. And I have four copies. So we got issue 201 here. And this is significant because this is the first appearance of Nathan Summers, who, you know, later becomes Cable. So this is him as a baby in here. Uh, Cable has appeared in the Deadpool movies. So maybe he'll also cross over into X-Force and maybe even like an X-Men movie. Uh, but yeah, four copies, pretty decent, but not really good enough to grade unless Cable really, really explodes again. So after Baby Cable, we have issue 202. Uh, no real significance, um, just during the time Marvel had Secret Wars 2 going on. So this one continues the story. Two direct editions, one new stand. And for issue 203, kind of the same story three copies. Uh, this also continues the story of Secret Wars 2. Um, other than that, no real significance. And to continue on the insignificant issues, we have four copies of issue 204. So this just features a Nightcrawler story, um, but yeah, you know, no, no significance other than, you know, we rarely see a Nightcrawler story. And to continue the trend, we have issue 205 four copies. Uh, this does feature a Wolverine story, so it kind of has some of this Weapon X stuff, so uh, that could be the significance. It is a pretty cool little cover, uh, but other than that, yeah, it's no, no real significance other than me having four. So we have issue 206 next, two copies. Uh, no super significance, just that Freedom Force appears in this one. I think this is their first appearance or second appearance since they changed their name. And two copies, new stand and direct edition. So here we have another four copies. As you can see, that's kind of a trend. I went from having a lot of duplicates to quadruplets. <laughs> so no super significance on this one, aside from like a pretty cool Wolverine cover. I believe he fights Phoenix in this issue, but um, yeah, still pretty cool cover. I, I still I dig it at four copies and you know, you can't go wrong with Wolverine. So to change the pace a little bit, I just got one copy here. Issue 208, no significance. Just a little cool fight cover scene, but that's about it. So this one, issue 209, got two copies here. No real significance. It's just a story with Nimrod versus X-Men, but that's about it. This book here, issue 210, this one here features a cameo appearance of the Marauders. Also, first appearance of Arc Light, the first appearance of Harpoon, and the first appearance of Scalp Hunter, the first appearance of Scrambler, and the first appearance of Mace Five. I have two copies of this book, and you know, that's I listed a lot of names there, but uh, there are a bunch of bunch of nobodies aside from the Marauders, but a bunch of nobodies. So right after that cameo appearance of the Marauders, we have issue 211 featuring the first full appearance of the team. Of course, the previous issue was the first appearance of each team member, but of the actual team, this is the full first appearance. Next issue is 212. Uh, no actual significance aside from a Wolverine versus Sabretooth battle, which not sure if this is his actual first battle with him, but 
you know, I think Wolverine number 10 is a very iconic battle with him. I think they, that's the one that they use in the X-Men, the original X-Men movie from Fox. Um, so, you know, Sabretooth versus Wolverine, I, I would call that just a key just because that's like a nice battle with him. So, yeah, that's issue 212. Two new stand copies too, so that's plus. This next issue is 213. This is a pretty significant book. Uh, this features Psylocke joining the X-Men for the very first time. And there's also a cameo of Mr. Sinister in this book. And of course, it still has Wolverine and Sabretooth fighting, continuing the fight from the previous issue. So I wish I had multiple copies of this, but this is a pretty good book, you know, because Mr. Sinister is heating up. So next we have, coming back to the multiple copies, we got four copies of issue 214. And this features Dazzler joining the X-Men team. So again, I would like to see her pop up in the MCU and I'm sure she will, because uh, I could definitely see Disney, uh, you know, really, really pumping that. So maybe even, maybe even like a Disney Plus show or something, you know, or just have, have some like music videos or just something, you know, I, I can see them, I can see them using Dazzler quite a bit. Um, but yeah, four copies here. Pretty nice, pretty nice book, pretty cool cover. So issue 215 is up next. This has uh, a few minor keys in it. So this has the first Crimson Commando, the first Saber, and first Stonewall in it. And only one copy, unfortunately. Uh, new stand edition, which is always a plus. Decent copy, decent condition, so you never know. You know, I, I doubt he'll blow up, but you never know. So issue 216 is up next, and it has no significance aside from a pretty cool storm cover. But that's about it. <laughs> 217, eh, you know, no significance. Has Juggernaut though. Can't go wrong with Juggernaut. It's pretty rare. I don't have that many Juggernaut issues. Other than that, no significance. So next we have issue 218, which this features the first artwork ever done in X-Men by Mark Silvestri, who's, you know, Mr. Top Cow. He, uh, he did a pretty long run here in Uncanny X-Men. So actually a lot of these, pretty much all the issues coming up for the rest of this episode are just all Mark Silvestri ones. So this, uh, this started off for him and two new stand. So issue 219 is next. The significance of this one is Havoc joins the team and also the Marauders are fighting against Polaris. So issue 220 is next, two copies. It's got Forge on the cover. Other than that, you know, no, no real significance. All right, guys, we got a pretty big key here and I have two copies of it, so that's good. So we got issue 221 here. This is the first Mr. Sinister. And the cool thing is I have Mark Silvestri signed on this copy right here. And I remember, I can't remember if he was either at Comic-Con or like the comic bug is like maybe at a comic store somewhere in LA. And I remember he had came and he was, you know, signing books and stuff and I brought a handful of books. And I think I'll, I'll go over some of them. I think they were still in this pile too, aside from his Top Cat books. But um, yeah, Mr. Sinister, like, uh, he's really eaten up, so I probably wouldn't. This one's actually pretty nice over here on this side. So this might be a, oh no, no, the corner's got some bends. Uh, you know, it's unfortunate, but still two raw copies of First Mr. Sinister. So issue 222 is next. No significance aside from another Wolverine versus Sabretooth story, which is always good. And next is issue 223 two copies and no significance uh, aside from a pretty cool snake attacking storm you know can't go wrong with her, her mohawk either it's pretty badass uh, but yeah no significance so next we have issue 224 I have two copies uh, in terms of story there's no significance but in this issue uh, there was actually included like this mutant drawing card that was attached to the top staple on the front and back and i haven't opened this up recently but seeing that my staple here is a little jacked up um probably safe to say that that card's gone or it's been tampered with so it's got a little rip here so mm, other than that this copy here is really nice but yeah issue 224. 
Issue 225 is next. Two copies here. Uh, this does have a first appearance, and it's the first appearance of Roma, who is another minor key, another minor character. So, yeah, also a pretty cool cover too. But that's, that's it for this one. Next up is 226. No significance, but a uh, pretty cool cover. You can see all their skeletons. But you, know, you can see like basically like an x-ray going through uh, all of them. So it's it's also a double-sized issue. Uh, other than that, no, no real significance. And another book of no real significance is issue 227. And I have three copies of this one. So this one's sharing two copies in here. Yeah, I'll probably want, I think I have a few books when I was sorting through them that I did that. So I definitely have enough bags and boards. I just didn't have time or anything. And this was a long time ago when I did this. So at the time I ran out of bag and boards. Um, so yeah, I should probably switch those out and give it its, its own dedicated bag and board. But yeah, no significance. So next we have issue 228. This one, again, no significance. It just has a you know, pretty cool cover. It's got Angel on it, saving a couple guys, but yeah, that's about it. So issue 229 is up next. This features the first appearance of the Reavers and first Skullbuster. I only have one copy, so I'm not really sure why I only have one copy, but yeah, new stand edition, and uh, it's pretty decent, pretty good shape. A uh, little, couple little color bins, but another Mark Silvestri cover. You know, good stuff here. So issue 230 is next. I have three copies here. Again, no significance, just three copies. And, you know, it's a decent cover, so well, another Silvestri cover. You know, I, I can only dream of having a Mark Silvestri original art cover, especially from Uncanny X-Men. So next we have issue 231 three copies of this guy. It does have a first appearance in here. Uh, it's the first appearance of Azazello, Behemoth III, and Korovev. And in case you're like me, you have no idea who those guys are. They're they're just some like random demons. Uh, I believe it's like in the demon world somewhere. So technically some first appearances here and three copies. So issue 232 is next, three copies. Uh, no super significance aside from the brood is back. Oh, the scary brood. Uh, so yeah, they are back. And there's actually some pretty, I actually like, I dig the brood, especially those like Wolverine covers where he's like, uh, where he's all broodish. I, I don't remember what the term is, but when they, when they take on a lot of their, a lot of their traits and stuff, uh, we'll get to that, that cover soon. But yeah, I got three issues here. Oh, the brood is back. So speaking of brood, 233, there's even more brood. And again, another Mark Silvestri cover. Awesome stuff. But yeah, just continuing on the story with the brood coming back. So issue 234 is next. I really like this cover. This one's awesome. So well, just like what I mentioned like uh, 30 seconds ago or so. Um, yeah, the brood is back. So you can tell, you can see right here, Wolverine all brooded out. Very iconic Sylvester cover. I actually, I really, really love this cover. I, this uh, original art, oh man. I, I don't even want to imagine how much it would be. But for all I know, maybe it's not that expensive or I can trade up or something. But yeah, this this copy right here is actually, this is signed by Mark Sylvester. So during that same time when I got Mr. Sinister signed, he also signed this book for me. So issue 235 is next. I have two copies here. This. This has the first appearance of the Genosian Magistrates, which includes the Genosian Mutates, Hawkshaw, Jennifer Ransom, Pipeline, the Press Gang, and Punch-Out. So again, two copies, new stand and direct edition. Uh, I don't really, uh, it's pretty minor key. So aside from like a pretty decent cover, um, yeah, pretty minor. So issue 236 is next, another iconic Sylvester cover. Uh, this does have a couple minor first appearances. So the first appearance of the G Engineer, David Moreau, and also Philip Moreau, and Wipeout. So two copies here, minor key. Yeah, but I mean, I, I like this cover because it's <laughs> they're being hung upside down, you know, Wolverine and Rogue. So it's, it's pretty funny. <laughs> so issue 237 is next. 
uh, no real significance. Just um, you know, just a cool cover of I think this yeah, Rogue and Wolverine. So it just kind of they have some little solo stories going on or a uh, little mini team up stories. Uh, they're just like holding on for dear life on the train. So that's about it. They're just trying to trying to excite you to, to buy the issue. 238 is next. Two copies, and again, no significance to this book. Uh, it does feature a pretty, pretty cool Mark Silvestri cover. So again, you can't go wrong with Mark Silvestri covers. But other than that, no significance. So next we have a pretty big book. So we have issue 239, and I have four copies of this guy. This is the second appearance of Mr. Sinister. It also starts off the Inferno storyline, so this is part one, and also the first cover of Mr. Sinister. So I have four copies of this one, so I'm pretty happy to have that. So this this, this is significant right here. So again, also Mark Silvestri cover. So yeah, hopefully Sinister starts blowing up. So this book plus his first appearance in Cameo will start going up. So next we have issue 240. I have two copies of this book. This features the first appearance of Madeline Pryor as the Goblin Queen. Plus it has a whole bunch of other like minor keys for a whole bunch of like these random doctors. Um, so no real significance, but you know, aside from Madeline Pryor being the Goblin Queen. And I think she has a few more appearances and she's hanging out with Mr. Sinister quite a bit. And I guess this would be technically Mr. Sinister's second cover appearance because he's on the here as well. So, pretty good book, and it also continues on the Inferno story. Line. So, issue 241 is next. It's kind of rare that I only have one copy of this book. No real significance aside from it being part three in the Inferno storyline. So, next we have issue 242, two copies here. Uh, again, no real significance. It is just part six of Inferno, and two direct editions of this. Unfortunately, no newsstand, but uh, yeah, just continuing on the story. And to round out the uh, Inferno storyline, we got part nine here. So other than that, no significance, just another, uh, just another cool cover that features Mr. Sinister. But that's about it. So now we have a pretty, it's getting into a pretty major key. So we have issue 244, which is the first appearance of Jubilee. And you also get the first appearance of the M Squad and Jubilee's parents, Mr. Lee and Mrs. Lee. Uh, two copies here, and because this is a Mark Silvestri cover and an issue by him, I had him sign it as well. So this one, this copy right here is signed. Unfortunately, the other copy is a little bit nicer copy of it, except the spine, you know, at the printer, you know, not all of these are gonna come out exactly even. So this one, you got a nice, basically the, the back page is bled over here. But that's unfortunate, but it's in pretty nice shape. It's still the first appearance of Jubilee though, so can't complain. So this is an interesting issue though, but I have issue 245 and I have three copies. Again, this is like that other book where I ran out of bags and boards. Um, but the significance of this book is that it features a whole bunch of cameos of Star Wars characters like Darth Vader, Chewbacca, and Yoda and stuff, and Luke Skywalker. Uh, and so basically a bunch of like 80s characters. So it also had Elf and Aliens. So very, very, very interesting. Because, uh, you know, because even Aliens, I think that was Dark Horse. So it's kind of odd that they popped up in here. Um, but Elf, uh, I believe they had like an 80s comic as well for that TV show. In Star Wars, obviously, uh, Marvel was doing the Star Wars comic books back then. So, um, yeah, pretty interesting book. So next we have issue 246, two copies here, and it just features a appearance of Mastermind. Not his first appearance or anything, just a, just a little appearance of him in the book. So that, that's about it. <laughs> so issue 247 is next, two copies. No significance aside from being a Mark Silvestri cover. But in terms of the story, uh, nothing. So we have a decent key here next, issue 248. Fortunately, I got two copies, but this features the first Jim Lee art on X-Men and as well, the death or the presumed death of Storm in this issue. So got a newsstand and direct edition here. Pretty nice, I mean, 
Jim Lee, you know, talk about Mark Silvestri being iconic. Jim Lee did not do as many X-Men books, but yeah, I mean, everyone knows the story of Image Comics, so, and everyone knows Jim Lee. <laughs> so yeah, I, I don't have to say much, much there. But yeah, very, very iconic issues. And now we have two copies of issues, 249, which features a minor key, which is the first appearance of Whiteout. And uh, we got a newsstand and a direct edition here. So this looks like another good stopping point. I have a lot of issues, so we may end up with about four episodes in total. There are some more X-Men keys to showcase in the next batch, so stay tuned. So what did you think of this batch of X-Men keys? Be sure to share below in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe for more X-Men and comic related content. Until next time, this is Steve from Cantu Comics, signing off.